Hey everybody, Dave Wild here, and I wanted to stop in and talk to you a little bit more about the game Galaxy Zento. Today what I'd like to do is just go over a few of the cards that are involved in the game. Um, I realize that's not going to be tremendously entertaining for everybody, but maybe it just give you a little more idea of what's in it and what you're going to see. Excuse me. Um, so, without further ado, let's just take a look at what's in here. I'd like to start with the player characters. There's the back of that. I know you probably can't see it extremely well, so bear with me. But uh, there are six characters that you can be in this game, and they're dealt out at random. Now, there won't always be just six. As a matter of fact, there's a bonus pack that's available that will give you 18 more characters that include things like a dwarf and a goblin and elf and some cool things like that. But for this, you start out with a soldier, a strongman, a speedster, a wizard, an inventor, and a psychic. Uh, each one has their own special stats and something cool that allows them to do neat things in gameplay, such as the psychic, uh, who says you may look at the top card of the deck before you draw once per turn, you may put that card on the bottom of the deck. Then you're stuck with whatever's on top. So it's just a, a cool way to kind of move your game along a little bit. And the others, like the wizard starts out using spells. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, the goals. There are six goals. Yes, eventually there will be more. That are also dealt out at random. And because it's a six-player game, we're just, you know, starting with six. Keeping it fairly simple. Um... The Recruiter, Recruit Three Allies. Player Assault, run around and smack other guys and deal five damage in any, you know, combination. You don't have to, you know, kill a character. You can if you want, but you don't have to. Uh, focal Points, complete three Focal Points successfully, and that's, they have to have combats or traps in them so that you can complete them successfully. Uh, not as easy as it sounds. Uh, combatant. Defeat three enemies from the deck. And uh, we'll get a little more on that in a minute. Archaeologist. Obtain three artifacts. Artifacts usually have an obtain roll on your d20 to try and get them. And some of them are protected by things. But Beastmaster. Defeat three beasts in combat. So... And later on, there'll be one for monsters, because there'll be monsters added to the game later. But that's just those. Just to give you an idea, everybody starts out with those, and then you start moving around on the board. For every move you make, a card gets flipped, and one of these things could pop out at you. Several types of things in the deck. I'll just go over them quickly before I give you some examples. Uh, characters, items, events, training cards that help boost you. Uh, the team leader cards, these are very special. They allow you to have extra allies. Um, artifacts, powers, traps, and of course, beasts. So let's just take a look at a, a few of these guys here, just for our short little video. Um, this is Yuxi, and he's a good character. And characters react to you based on your alignment, either good or evil. Since Yuxi is good, your choices with him, if you're evil, would be to try and evade him with a roll on a d20, or go into combat with him, and see who can hit the other one first three times to deal one damage. Um, but if he's your friend, you can try and roll to recruit him as an ally on your d20. Now, he does have a special ability, and a lot of characters do. Yuxi here says, roll over. If you fail to evade, Yixi makes an attack roll before a combat against your defense. If successful, combat is over and you lose. Take one damage, because in the book, he's this giant armadillo creature, and he rolls into a big ball and rolls over you. Just like, just like in the book that, he's, that this is based on. Um, let's look at an evil character real quick. The Mercenary Wizard. I realize, once again, you can't see that very well, and it's dark, so I'm going to drop it. Hang on. 
Uh, the mercenary wizard, same thing with him. He's evil, so if you're evil, you could wind up with him as a friend. Um, if you try to evade him and fail, though, he's a beastly summoner. Reveal cards from the deck until a beast is drawn. Fight the beast before fighting the wizard. The beast attacks first. And uh, now also I should point out, as I get ahead of myself, which I do often because my head is scattered a lot of times, um, there are bonuses with each of these guys. If you have them as an ally, they give you bonuses that bump up your abilities. Uh, for example, uh, he gives you an attack and defense of plus three, your plus four defense against magic and artifacts, and you are plus five to obtain artifacts because he's a wizard. That's just this guy. So he helps you out quite a bit. Now, as you're roaming around, you could wind, there's quite a few freebies. You could wind up with an item popping out at you, and probably arguably one of the best ones is the laser rifle, which gives you a plus two attack. And it says, meet Sally. She's better than standard issue. I think I believe him. But there's other kinds. There's lightning scrolls and neat things like that that you can use. There's one-use items that you can pitch out just to kind of mess around with the table. Um, events are, are based on things that happen in the book, and they have a direct effect on gameplay as soon as they pop out. And the example I'm going to give you on that today is a card called Framed for Murder. And it says, if you are good, lose an ally. They were framed for murder. If you are evil, choose a good player, and they lose an ally. And it doesn't matter where they are on the board. You just get to sock them with that as soon as it pops out, and then, then that's your turn. But it's a good turn to have. And it says they had no choice but to run to protect the princess, which is what happens in my novel. Very distinct effect on gameplay. There's one that, that affects evil characters, too, called Under Arrest. You can arrest somebody. Uh, training cards which are cool, but they're not overly plentiful, there's five of them in this deck, give you various bonuses to your modifiers. Um, this one gives you a plus two defense against spells, and here's one that gives you plus two to escape traps. So you can wind up with those. They're a card you get to put right into play for yourself, and you're on your way. Artifacts. Um... Artifacts, there are some one-use artifacts, but all of them take a dice roll to obtain. And one of them that I'll show you that's been a favorite here is the Wizard's Wand. Uh, the Wizard's Wand says you have to roll an 18 to obtain it. Unless you're the Wizard, you are then plus 2, so you roll a 16. You may draw and play spells if you have the Wizard's Wand. You are plus 5 to play your spells, and plus 3 defense against spells so it's a little harder to hit you with them. Just, uh, there's some nice artifacts, quite a few of them, plenty to keep up with your goal, obtaining artifacts. Um, powers. There's a fair selection of powers in the deck, and let's see, uh, there's, it's hard to say what's really a, a favorite for everybody, but I think the one that boosts people a lot is a power called Fear Shock. And what it does is it gives you plus five attack and defense, which is a nice boost in the game. But also, during your turn, you may pick a player within five spaces. And that player is minus ten in their next turn or combat, whichever comes first. Why? Because you're really scary. Quite a few powers. I may do something to explain them more later on, but that's just for the example traps. Never know when you're going to walk into a trap while you're traveling the universe. And the meanest trap in the game right now, some people like it, some people hate it, is the explosive device level 3. It says, first of all, to escape it, you need a 19 on your d20. If failed, all players on the entire board, yes, you can trigger this to hit everybody, take one damage, lose all items, allies, and artifacts. And it says there's no running from an anti-planetary device. You can believe it. Because this, for a 1 in 90 chance to come out on your turn, if you don't escape it, it hurts everybody. 
which in a way it's kind of a game leveler, but it's the only one that's that that's that tough. The other explosive devices don't do nearly as bad as far as the traps are concerned. And there's a pit trap, and there's a dart trap, all kinds of them. We can get to those later on. Um, now I'm going to hop over to beasts. Beasts are a lot of fun, and if you fail combating them, funny things can happen. Uh, they do have an evade where you can try and sneak away. Some of them aren't so easy to evade, and all of them are kind of interesting in combat. I'm going to show you the meanest one we've got, and it is called the Monstrosity. And it was developed by the mercenary wizard in the book. It took all the heroes to take this thing down. Evading it is simple. It's humongous and it's not very bright. Um, but its attack is a plus 8 and its defense is a 22. So you're going to have to roll good to hit this thing. That's not the fun part. If the monstrosity defeats you, starting with the player on your left, it attacks that player and continues until beaten, or it has beaten all players. Allies may not fight the monstrosity alone. So basically, if this beats you, it wanders over to, your co to, to the next player to your left and chomps on them. If it beats them, it keeps going till it beats everyone, then it gets bored and walks away. Definitely stirs up the table. So, um, oh, see, I forget things. In a way, it's kind of important because it's something that I live with and, and I own it. Okay, so, um, but I want to show you, these are the spells. Spells are kept in a separate deck, and at the beginning of the turn, anyone who can use magic draws themselves a spell card. They don't have to reveal it. I'll go into them more later on, but I'm just going to show you uh, a cute one that messes with people on the table that people enjoy playing, and it's called Alignment. And choose a player within six spaces and change their alignment from good to evil or evil to good. This card does not stay in play. So it's a permanent change. There's no chance other than this card coming out to switch them back again. It can cause them to lose their allies or anything that requires on their alignment to play. It can definitely mess with things. So there you go. Uh, that's the cards in a nutshell. Um, I'll probably do another little production later on to kind of get it more in depth and show you what's going on with cards and tell you about things. Um, I hope that you enjoyed the little segment. And I thank you very much for tuning in. I thank you very much for considering uh, my Kickstarter. And we'll see you again soon. I'm going to be doing a video uh, where you're actually going to see gameplay. There's a bunch of us going to get together and we're going to try and hammer out some gameplay so that uh, you can see this game in action, which I was told would be a good idea to do. So thank you, and have an awesome day.